Hey guys, welcome back to another Fortnite storyline video, where we piece together what has changed since the Fortnite live event in Season 2. Let's head straight in. Last video, we discussed who the Seven are, why they were important, and why Jonesy remembered everything. With this event, we know that when Jonesy had spotted us, we weren't supposed to be there. Which brings us to our newest theory. Almost every theory on YouTube right now revolves around Fortnite being a simulation. And it's right. I hate to admit it, but it changes a lot. But this isn't very far-fetched. In fact, in my first theory, I said this. The visitor controls the island. But what if it was all a simulation? A game? To make people think what is reality and what's not. The visitors controlled the island. And to make us think what is reality and what isn't. Of simulation. I just kind of threw away the theories, I found a much better solution to it. The event cutscenes clearly show that they were in a hurry to stop the storm from breaking, and we can tell by looking at the differences in time, that time works differently, which was kind of already a known fact because we can see the day cycles we play. The device only held for what felt like a few minutes, maybe in Fortnite time, half an hour to an hour, but in the real world it took hours. Fortnite is just a simulation. The people who control the simulation, which we know exists because of Aiden Jonesy, are trying to solve a real world problem. Simulations are only created to help people achieve a goal. Take a driving simulation for example, and take a simulated driving test to practice your driving safety before heading in and trying it in real life. Fortnite is just that. Something is wrong in the real world. So they put a simulated version of what is going on into their world until they can find different ways to solve their problem. For those of you who are familiar with the book series The Maze Runner, or even the movies, you'll know that the entire first book is a simulation. The next book is a trial, and the last is the final step to save the world. They use different events to use their advantages to see how their brain would react and how the rest of the world could. And this is exactly how the Fortnite simulation works. Fortnite puts a series of problems into one game, having to kill people, be the last standing, avoid the storm, and the biggest and most obvious of all, don't die. With these problems, we can assume that something traumatic is happening in the real world. Clearly though, it's not as huge as we think. If it was a really, really important thing right at this moment in time, it would have been a lot more dramatic during the Doomsday cutscenes. And this, my friends, is where we find ourselves one big loophole that it seems every other Fortnite theorist has overlooked. Midas was a part of this project before the simulation was made. Midas supported the simulation, he went in to try to assist the game, which is why they had real files in the office place. He was never written in the game's code, he went in to help shape the simulation as the visitor. But as he then took on his alias Midas, he realized he kept going over the same events every single day because he had different masks of different people, but he had a statue of someone and a mask of someone, which didn't really line up. When Midas attempted breaking the storm, Havoc broke loose at the office place? I don't really know what to call it, it just doesn't have a good name yet. But if it is just a simulation, why would it have mattered? Most foreign theorists would say it's because without it, the game wouldn't have a purpose, and the simulation's coding is that after one is left standing, it loops itself. As Agent Jonesy said, the storm was connected to the loop. Without the storm, it couldn't loop, and Midas knew this and tried to break it. If it really is a simulation, can't they just recode it? And that, my friends, is where things get confusing. Technically, yes, they could just recode it and reboot it, but this is where my earlier theory comes into play. When the simulation was created, Midas wasn't inside of it. It's almost like a Wreck-It Ralph movie, for those of you who have seen it. If there's a hard reset in a game that you specifically don't regenerate in, you will be gone forever. So same goes here. If they were to do a hard reset on the simulation, they would lose all of their work, their test subjects, everything. But here's the add-on to this. Clearly, they could just adjust the code, because we know someone did it to maintain the storm with the tsunami, but it wouldn't hold, as we now have the floods in Season 3. As Jonesy said, it was a temporary fix, but Midas took this as an opportunity. He knew there would be chaos, and in the midst of it, he was able to sneak in and get a peek of the real world while everything was going haywire. What happened with the information gained when we went in there? We don't know yet. 
This new season hasn't answered any of our questions just yet. But with time, answers will come. So for now, let's keep theorizing of what could happen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Our last video popped off and I appreciate all the support on our previous theory. We hit 2,000 views within 3 days and nearly 60 subscribers, which is insane, so thank you guys so much. As always, make sure to put what you thought about this theory in the comments, and what theories you have, and I will look into them, because one of you could have something I haven't yet found out for myself. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss another upload like this one. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.